Hello. I fit in a category that you'd never guess. I didn't ask to be in it. I didn't even win a contest. But here I am. October 1996, I was a happy wife and mother. A wonderful husband and two lovely children. It was a normal day on October 15th. My husband, he was going to work. I got the kids off to school, came home, did those household chores. The children came home from school. I helped them with their homework. Everything was normal. I cooked dinner. The children ate. They got ready for bed so they'd be ready for school the next day. As I waited for my husband to get home, it seemed like that never was happening. It was like really late. So I guess I kind of thought that he was going to do some overtime. But I was wrong. As I got myself prepared for bed, I heard sirens going up and down the street from the house that we lived in. We had just bought our first home. We were first home time buyers in our families. It was a wonderful time. We were happy. We had a swimming pool in the backyard. We were in love. We had decent children. And we shared everything we had with the youth in our community. But on this night, as usual, I heard police sirens, and I heard the ambulance, and I heard the fire trucks. So I just said to myself, here we go again, another shooting in the inner city. As I prepared myself for bed, I could still hear the police cars a few houses down from where I lived. I could hear loud talk and I could even see the blue lights from the police car flashing on the windows in my upper bedroom. And I just said to myself, gee, somebody must have gotten killed. My phone rang. I answered it, thinking maybe it was my husband saying, you know, I'm going to work a little late. Don't wait up for me. I'll see you when I get in. But it wasn't. It was a phone call saying, come to the emergency room as soon as possible. Your husband is here. And they hung up. Well, not thinking anything too serious, I got the children out of bed, put them on some clothing, threw something on myself, quickly got into the car. And as we backed out of the driveway and went down our street, I saw a crime scene. Police everywhere, lights everywhere, police tape up. And I'm saying to myself, gee, this must be the situation when I heard those lights and those sirens. Gee, I'm so sad for somebody who got killed. We, went, we made our way on down to the hospital. We got to the emergency room and a woman met us. And she says to me, while I'm standing there with my two small children, your husband has expired. And I'm standing there like expired, you know, what does that mean? Because I know meat expires, milk expires, you know, cheese. But I, I could not connect it. So the woman literally came out and said, again, with my two small children standing there, your husband's dead. 
it really didn't register because I couldn't believe it. I was in automatic shock. My children and I were taken to the back and we were placed in a room where there was a doctor standing and my husband's body was lying on a gurney with tubes in his chest, his nose. His eyes were still open. He was dead. And my children were standing there looking at that. And if I had not been in shock and been in my right mind, I would have never allowed my children to see what they saw. After that happened, we were escorted out of the room. We were sent home. And that's when it all began. News, media, people, clergy, everybody wanted a piece of us because everybody wanted to know what happened. My husband was a wonderful person. He loved people. He was quiet. He was meek. He was humble. And he worked. He didn't sell drugs. He didn't steal. He was just coming home from work. He was coming home from work that night. There was a robbery already in progress. Someone else was getting robbed. As the story goes, my husband broke the robbery up. Pretty much said something probably like, you know, hey, what's going on? You know, stop. The person that was getting robbed ran. That person ran and got away. Never called and told the police that there was a robbery and that there's a man down the street getting robbed. They robbed my husband and they shot him in the chest. And they left him lying in the street only three houses down from the home we had just bought. When I heard those gunshots and those ambulance and those fire trucks, when I passed by that crime scene and that tape was up and all those lights were on, that was my husband's crime scene. He had already been rushed to the hospital. They CPR'd him. They did everything they could. But he was dead on arrival. It's not fair. Today, it's 16 years later, they still have not apprehended the person who murdered my husband. There is someone out there who knows. The person who got robbed, who was getting robbed, excuse me, who was getting robbed, and Melvin saved your life because he spoke up for you. For 16 years, you haven't come forth and said anything. I'm begging you, would you please, if you see this video, or anyone that knows this person, if you see this video, please ask this man to call the tip line at the Boston Police Department so we can get more leads. Melvin died a hero. He died for this person that he didn't even know. He gave his life that that other person that was being robbed could run and be okay. It's been 16 years. Melvin didn't get to see his son get married and have children. He didn't get to see his daughter with children. He'll never walk her down the aisle. He and I will never 
grow old together and raise our grandchildren. Melvin never got to see a black man become president of the United States of America. In honor of Melvin, what I have done is I've established a program called Melvin's Mission. And what that program does is support women survivors of homicide. And that's who I am. I'm a survivor of homicide. My loved one was taken away from me because someone chose to kill him. This program will be a diamond. There are so many women out there that need help. They need more than a referral. They need more than to walk into an organization and be handed all these pamphlets. Go here, go there, try this, do this. I'm talking about a day program. A program where women who are ready to deal with the trauma, the depression, the anxiety, the low self-esteem, the guilt, all those things happen when homicide knocks at your door. I've been depressed for 14 years. I've been anxious and feeling shameful and feeling guilt. I even know people who said to me, it's been 16 years. You haven't gotten over that yet. And when they say it, they jerk their neck. Guess what? No, I haven't gotten over that. How do you get over the man who's the father of your children? The man who allowed you to be the woman you wanted to be? How do you get over that? How do you get over somebody walking into your world and have the power to change it? You don't just get over that. This program will offer hands-on, hands-on work with these women women's groups we will sit down and talk I mean get down to the nitty-gritty you know talk about those things that we can't tell anybody else journal writing meaning we'll write down our feelings and then come in the next day and talk about those those, 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 those miserable things, those miserable feelings, whether it's suicide or depression or, or, or I want revenge, whatever it is in that journal, we'll talk about it. Yoga, something just to calm your nerve. Lunch, just sit there and eat, share. Food is therapy. Then we'll do things like telephone tag, where no matter what time of night you're going through, because I know I do, there are nights, 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 in the morning, I can't sleep, and I just cry. Because there's nobody I could talk to that understands what I'm going through. Because nobody wants to hear it because it's not affecting them. Be happy that you haven't experienced what we have. Homicide's not going anywhere. And statistics show those of you who are watching this video right now, either you 
or a family member or a close friend is going to be touched by homicide. Please, I'm asking you, would you help me? Help me with this nonprofit organization called Melvin's Mission. Help me help these women while I help myself. Because I don't sit here knowing everything. I don't sit here wanting to be this big facilitator who's untouchable. No. I'm learning too. I'm asking you to help us. Help Melvin. Melvin was a good man. He wasn't perfect. Who is? But he took care of his family. He worked two jobs. He loved young people. He was humble. He was kind. And he didn't take anything for granted. And when he walked up that street, he saved someone else's life. Could you imagine walking up to a robbery and the other person run and then they turn on you and a gun is pointed in your face? You don't know how much sleep I've lost wondering, did my baby beg for his life? Did my baby tell the person, I'll give you everything I have, just let me go, because I have children. I'm asking you, would you please help Melvin's mission? You can help by donating money, whether it's a dollar, or five dollars, or ten dollars, whatever you have to give. Everything counts. And the reason why I'm asking for donations is because we need a building. We need a place where we can run this organization. So I'm asking you, if you would give to Melvin's mission, every dime will go to support and to strengthen this mission. I want to show you where you can send any donations that you may want to give. If you would just send them to this address. It's called Melvin's Mission. Supporting Women Survivors of Homicide. Citibank, N.A., South N., 1365 Washington Street, Boston, Massachusetts, 02118. And I want to say thank you. Whatever you send, thank you. It's going to help somebody. Here's Melvin. That's my baby. That was my man. And that smile that you see right there, that's real. He was nice. He was a nice person. I wish every woman in the world could have had a man like him. I'm not selfish. Don't forget to send Citibank South End, 1365 Washington Street, Boston, Massachusetts, 02118 to Melvin's Mission, Inc. 
supporting women survivors of homicide. Don't let his death be in vain. And I just like to say before closing, thank you. Thank you for your kindness. And I know it's hard. We're living in a recession now. And I know people just don't, I know people don't have money. But if you could just spare, maybe you get a pack of gum every single day. And that gum is 35 cents a pack. Maybe you could go a day without a pack of gum. And just send the 35 cent in. Whatever you send, we really would appreciate it. So we can get this program started and we can help these women so they don't become statistics so that they can take care of their children that they're left with after homicide. Because if we don't take care of the women, who's going to take care of their children? Help us out, please. Melvin would appreciate it. His children would. And so, so do I. Thank you. And I'd also like to leave my email. If you want to write me, you can reach me at lowercase Melvin's Mission at gmail.com Again, if you need to reach me, if you want to talk to me, please reach me at Melvin's Mission gmail.com and the, all those letters are lowercase. Thank you. God bless you. And you'll hear more from us. I'm sure. Goodbye.